Today we're going through the most important layouts for your farm for ultimate maximum excessive efficiency. That was kind of a mouthful. Let's get started. Farm buildings in Stardew Valley are actually incredibly space efficient and are overpowered in my opinion. This is because farm buildings take up a very small footprint on your farm. But the interior of these farm buildings are often six times bigger than the footprint they take. So yeah, it is definitely worth investing in a few of these buildings. So here are the most optimal layouts for every farm building in the game. Let's get started with an easy one, the deluxe shed. Deluxe sheds are pretty large, so they can fit a very impressive 137 processing machines in them. That is an impressive amount of processing machines. Yeah, it isn't pretty, but it is indeed efficient. Your farmhouse in Stardew Valley is incredibly underrated. A fully upgraded farmhouse that includes both of the free renovations is actually a pretty massive upgrade to your farm. With the help of a controller and the brilliant split screen feature, you can create a few cabins and fully upgrade them to have up to four of these farmhouses on your farm. In these additional farmhouses, the most optimal setup for a cabin looks like this. There are 300 and 50 kegs in the farmhouse. Now that is unbelievably effective. Having four farmhouses on your farm comes with one other benefit. You will also have four basements on your farm, meaning you should be able to age four times more wine or cheese. A sane person would use this layout in their basement. Setting your basement up like this means that you will have 125 casks in your basement ready to age some wine. This is a pretty cool layout because there is just enough room to get around and there is no wasted space. But you could, if you wanted to, sacrifice your sanity for more profits and set up your basement like this. This layout completely maximizes the space in your basement. There are 189 casks in your basement with this layout, which is game changing, especially if you have four basements. But collecting the aged wine and placing the new wine into these casks is one of the most tedious tasks out there. Use it at your own discretion. Purchasing either the coop or the barn will give you the ability to purchase farm animals, like rabbits and goats. Most of the animals in the game can be profitable on their own, but there is one additional benefit to purchasing these farm buildings. And I'm sure you've guessed where I was going with this. We can fill up these buildings with processing machines. The deluxe coop does have a small interior when compared to the barn, but it's still big enough to fit 60 processing machines. But the barn, the barn is much bigger, allowing you to fit 136 processing machines. This means that a deluxe barn will behave as a building to your animals while also providing the same interior space as a deluxe shed. Barns can indeed be quite effective if used correctly. The greenhouse is not that big, but it is really important if you want to make some money during winter. If you set up your sprinklers like this, there will only be one farmable tile that is taken with a sprinkler, meaning you will have plenty of space for your crops. You can also fit 18 fruit trees in your greenhouse if you plant them in these exact spots. And of course, after your fruit trees have fully matured, you could even fit a few processing machines in here as well. Utilizing your greenhouse to its fullest potential is usually a good idea since we only get one of them. Alrighty, so now we know how to set up our farm buildings for success, but we should just abuse the rest of Stardew Valley as well. Like the quarry. The quarry is an interesting area in Stardew Valley. If left untouched, the quarry will spawn in rocks, resources, and even trees. It can be a good source of resources, but it's not really that reliable because the spawn rate is pretty low. Instead, we could just utilize the quarry as a massive storage 
storage facility for our processing machines. With the minecarts upgrade, you can get to the quarry relatively quickly from your farm. The quarry is incredibly large. A simple layout like this will result in you having 370 processing machines. If you are not going for 1 billion gold, then you could place every keg you will ever need in this quarry. And then dedicate your farm to a beautifully decorated masterpiece. To the left of the bus is a large empty unused tunnel. This tunnel only serves one purpose. You can come here to start the quest to unlock the casino. Besides for that, the tunnel has no use unless we give it a use. So yeah, just fill it up with whatever purchasing machines you want in this layout and you will be gaining about 130 tiles of pure efficiency. I saw someone leave this comment and I can see how it can help some people. If you struggle placing items into your processing machines while collecting completed items at the same time, you can use grass starters to place down some grass inside of your farm buildings. This will cause your character to walk a little bit slower and this will result in you having an easier time placing items back into your processing machines. We all know that fairy rose honey is just insanely profitable. Each fairy rose honey will sell for 960 gold. But flower setups can be tricky because of the odd range of the flower. So this layout here is the most optimal layout for a single flower. This is the most possible bee houses that you can place around a flower and still be able to reach every bee house with relative ease. The only problem with this setup is that it is possible to accidentally pick up the flower and be forced into a difficult situation. If you are like me and don't want to risk it, you can use this layout instead. This setup utilizes 4 flowers with a single sprinkler in the middle. This layout is not nearly as efficient as the previous layout, but it is actually impossible to harvest the flower without destroying some of your beehives houses, making it perfect for someone like me. This setup has one additional benefit. It just looks really nice. This setup would look awesome on your farm. Trellis crops can be highly profitable, but they can also be incredibly annoying since they block your path. This is the layout I tend to use for trellis crops. I think it works pretty well. Okay, here is a sneaky bonus tip for people who are playing on PC. Garden pots are great because with deluxe retaining soil, crops will just last forever and never have to be watered or replanted. But garden pots have one major flaw. You cannot place ancient fruit in garden pots because the game just doesn't allow you to do that. Well, there is a trick you can do to force ancient seeds into your garden pots with the help of the tractor mod. All you need to do is place down your garden pots, then hold the ancient fruit seeds in your hand and get on your tractor. For some reason, this bypasses the in-game rule and plants the ancient seeds into the garden pots with no warning or error message. After that, your ancient fruit will grow like normally in your garden pots. Most of you are not subscribed. About 73% actually. If you are enjoying the videos, hit subscribe. It's free. But for now, I will see you in the next video.